everybody, and welcome to the Ignite Business Talks podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. My name is Ignatius L. Jackson, CPA, and today we are talking about the Black Sports Symposium. So this event happened over in Atlanta, Georgia. It happened uh, about a month ago now, um, and I attended uh, just for a day to check it out. Um, you know, I attended the um, expo because I wanted to see if it would be a good opportunity to maybe do some advertising over uh, at the event for next year. Um, sadly, there weren't too many booths there, but I did talk to a few people, and apparently this is the first time that they did it. So I'm going to kind of give it another shot. But I just generally wanted to speak about the opportunity, I think, that the Black Sports Symposium really has um, to shape and, and change the minds of black professionals that are entering the field of sports management, uh, whether that's being agents or working for the, the teams themselves uh, in their front offices, doing various tasks and activities, um, you know, whatever field they decide to go into in the black sports world, uh, a huge opportunity that I feel like the, the symposium is really missing by taking a deeper dive into finances, okay? Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have in this country is we don't have enough people that are talking about the importance of personal finance, okay? Um, whether it's athletes, okay? A good topic on Black Sports Symposium is for athletes as well. Why are we not doing more to try to educate the athletes, the professional athletes that are making millions of dollars in how to properly invest, put some of it away, make sure that they never go broke again, by implementing certain, you know, things in their uh, financial wherewithal uh, during their early years when they're making all this money, right? Um, and even in their later years when they start making even more money, right? And so, because you never know what's going to happen with sports, right? You never know what's going to happen. It's a tough industry, a lot of crazy stuff going on, a lot of changes that happen. If you get a new GM or you get a new uh, owner of a team, the whole front office can and or back, and back office can kind of shake up. You just never know what's going to happen when it comes to the sports world. Um, additionally, you got athletes moving all over the place. A lot of trades happening in the NBA right now, um, and and other stuff that's going to be happening probably in the NFL and the MLB here soon as well. So always constantly changing things around and moving things around. Um, injuries also occur, right? So if you're an athlete, you never know when you're going to get injured and your career is going to be over. Okay, so it's important not to spend all your money. That's the, that's the first and most important point, right? Um, whether you're an athlete or whether you're working for inside the sports organizations, um, you know, you don't want to spend all your money that you're making. You want to make sure you're putting aside at least 10 to 20 percent of what you're making on a gross basis, okay, um, every year into some sort of savings vehicle. Or a combination of savings vehicles, all right? And if you do that, then you're going to set yourself up in the long run to make sure you don't ever run out of money in the, in the future again. Now, for the athletes that are making millions of dollars, I'd argue that should probably be more like 40 or 50% in the early years just to make sure you get yourself a good head start on putting some money to the side. And then you can kind of taper down the more money you make. You can taper that down to maybe 20%, 30%, or 10%. Um, but definitely on the you know administrative side for all the people working in sports organizations that aren't making millions of dollars, but you know they're getting a decent salary, you know, making $50,000 a year, maybe $75,000 a year, um, some of them six figures, right? Um, making sure that you are setting aside at least 10% of your gross income so what that essentially means is if you're making, you know, let's say $70,000 a year and you set aside 10% of that amount, which is $7,000 each year, then you essentially put that into various vehicles. My recommendation typically is going to be a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k because you're in a very low tax bracket when you're only making $70,000 a year. And so putting that into a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k, letting it grow, uh, makes a lot of sense. And then as you start to make more money as your career goes, then you can decide, do you want to put more money into the Roth side or do you want to put some money into the pre-tax side? And the more money you start to make, the more it could make sense to probably put some a little bit into the pre-tax side. But I've also done some stuff where I've done some calculations and kind of proven out that the Roth really is the better account in the long run uh, for a number of reasons. And we'll talk about that in a different video. But 
um, ch just t pay attention to my channel uh, and my social media and you can see some of the uh, data and stuff that I've kind of put out there that would suggest that I think the Roth account really is the superior account and is super underutilized by people out there um, that are chasing current tax savings instead of um, looking at the future tax-free growth that you're going to achieve in that account, especially the younger that you are, okay? So in a lot of cases, you got professional athletes and people that are entering the sports world that are very young, okay, in their early 20s. And so it's a great opportunity to put some money into a Roth IRA, you know? Even if you can't quite get to that 10% number just because you live in an area that might be a high cost of living and you just can't really afford to put that much away, st just start somewhere. I mean, do 5%, okay? When you're young, the, the younger you are, the lower the amount that you need to put in each year, and it, as long as you don't touch it, you kind of leave it alone, let it grow, to get to the point where you can really do some good damage, okay? Um, so, for example, in that example that I was giving you, 10% of 70,000 would be 7,000 a year. If you did that for 40 years, you'd come out with, you know, roughly about 1.5 million, maybe a little bit more or maybe a little bit less, just depending on the growth rate that you get in that account. Um, and uh, you know consistency of putting the money in on a you know monthly basis versus just doing it once a year or you know maybe once a quarter uh, because the we've we've learned that this ideal of dollar cost averaging makes a lot of sense right uh, where you're constantly putting money in um, no matter what where the market stands uh, you're constantly putting money in okay um, so at its base level, if you do something like that, where you're put contributing money each month into some sort of re retirement vehicle, Roth IRA, if you want pre-tax IRA or traditional IRA as well, that works too. Um, you, you're going to set yourself up for much future success from a financial standpoint. Okay. So, I mean, 40 years at 7,000 a year can get you to 1.5 million. That's, that's awesome, right? Um, worst, worst case scenario is going to get you to probably a million, um, but best case scenario it could even get you to two million. I mean, so somewhere in that range, you're probably going to end up at, right, um, at, at retirement age. Um, actually, maybe even a little bit before retirement age, if you start super young, you know, most people graduate college around 21, 22 years old. And so if you start at 22 years old, 40 years, is six, 62 years old, um, you know, that's a good early start to retirement. You know, we have a lot of people who can't even retire until they're like 70 or 75 right now because they haven't saved enough for retirement. And we've got this high inflationary environment that is just making it so costly for people to be able to truly retire. So a lot of, um, older people are having to do part-time jobs, um, just to make ends meet because it's so expensive to live in this country right now, depending on your location. Um, but especially in places like where I live, like Phoenix, Arizona, places that are higher cost of living, like LA, New York, um, Miami, and some other places that are just super high cost of living, right? Um, so if you live in any of these areas, you're really looking at um, needing to have a good you know, retirement set up for yourself. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where uh, if you can commit to putting 10% away per year, at least 10% away per year of your gross income, you will significantly set yourself up. Now, back to the Black Sports Symposium, <laughs> which is where I kind of started this conversation. So I think I, when I looked at the agenda, um, and again, I didn't attend the whole event, so I can't quite give the full uh, a full recap of everything, but um, the portion that I did attend on that first day um, didn't give me a great sense of that it would be worth my time and energy to go and spend money, have my team come out um, and stuff like that for this event. Um, but I think there's a huge opportunity there where um, maybe that can change in the future, right? Um, so one of the things that I think would be uh, beneficial is if they were to add more of a financial component to it though. Um, I think that's something that is super key. I think I saw that on the agenda, there's maybe one class, maybe two classes at most that were about finances. And so uh, until we get this into our curriculum in the high schools and college classes and stuff like that, right, we really need to take it upon ourselves when we're doing these uh, 
organizations, these events, um, things of that nature that are trying to help people succeed in the real world to add a component of it that is related to personal finance, okay? Um, a lot of the sessions are about being yourself in the sports field, how to, how to be your true self and this and that, and how to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and um, you know, all the typical stuff that you kind of see uh, when it comes to black organizations and black conferences. Um, you know, you get a lot of that. Um, people talking about their experiences of, um, you know, being treated a certain way within the various teams that they work for and stuff like that. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, that stuff is important, it's good, right? But can we add just a little bit more of a component of something that's going to actually um, additionally set them up for really future success from a finance standpoint? Because in a lot of cases, we got people that are you know making a lot of money that just don't know what to do with it, okay? Um, and so if we had, you know, uh, like maybe three or four sessions, maybe, maybe five sessions, even better, um, that were kind of going through various components of personal finance, and that would be like five hours worth of sessions, right? Um, you could do some pretty significant damage, okay? Um, in terms of educating them and changing their mindset on what to do with the money that they start making. And so I just think there was a huge missed opportunity that continues to be a huge missed opportunity, not just the Black Sports Symposium people, all right? But this is just one event that I attended recently that I wanted to kind of talk about. But it's been a huge issue amongst all black organizations that are out there um, uh, against all, you know, of the, of the groups that I've kind of attended in events for over the years where I've kind of noticed that we just don't really talk about a lot of personal finance stuff. You, you have to more so seek out a conference or an event that is specific to personal finance. And who really wants to do that? Most people don't. Uh, we haven't seen a huge interest in, you know, financial literacy events or conferences. Um, and so it's important that we make it a component of a uh, larger conference, right, that's talking about topics that people, you know, uh, are interested in. Uh, because until you kind of get people to really truly sit down and think about this stuff, it's not going to change, you know. Um, and I, I don't know why we're so, fi talking about finances is so taboo. Um, you know, we, we've been in our culture of in the black families. We just don't talk about finances for some reason. I mean, even myself growing up, my family, we never talked about finances other than parents telling me we didn't have money to, you know, do whatever I wanted to do sometimes, um, like going to get some, you know, ice cream or something like that. So, you know, it's occasionally you kind of come across those situations where you're talking about money, but not really talking about what to do with money uh, to help yourself grow and to how to budget, how to create a spending plan, what types of savings accounts should you use, how should you use savings accounts, what type of investments should you put your money into? Um, should you use a 401k or an IRA? These are all great topics that we need to really discuss more in the black community to really change and bridge the wealth gap that we have in this country. The wealth gap right now is like this. By doing this, we can slowly but surely decrease that wealth gap and hopefully get to some parity at some point, you know, to where... Um, there is some true equality, right, in terms of the wealth that we have in the country um, in the various communities. I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of data that out there about how much spending power the black family has in this country. Um, and so we also need to make sure that we're not just spending, though. We need to make sure we're investing and that we're doing what we need to do to be successful in our careers, okay um in in our in our lives and to leave funds for that next generation um you know your your children your grandchildren etc to be able to thrive and continue to grow and not start out with nothing um you know they have a little bit of a kickstart um to their financial journey as well and that is so important okay um you know if we look at what a lot of um families do that, you know, are not black. I mean, in a lot of cases, uh, we have a lot of opportunities out there where those families are leaving, um, 
decent amounts for their uh, future generations. Not always, don't get me wrong, I, this is generalities, right? But it happens more so in white families, um, Asian families, maybe less so in Hispanic families as well, but I think a little bit more still than it does in black families, okay? Um, in terms of leaving, uh, you know, some funds and uh, future uh, opportunities for the future generations. And so we just really, we, we really need to change our mindset and, and have a mindset shift, right? When it comes to the black community. And so that's what I would encourage, you know, various organizations out there to do. Um, even individuals, right? Seek out this information, okay? So one of the things that I'm going to do um, on July 31st, of 2024 uh, depending on when you're watching this video so if it's past that date then it already happened uh, but there will be a recording so even if it's past that date then you can go ahead and watch the recording right um, but on july 31st um, i'm going to do the second installment of a financial literacy um, webinars that i've been trying to uh, create here so we did the first one uh, back on april 30th which was the end of financial literacy month okay to kind of kick things off and so we're going to do the second installment on July 31st here. Um, and so it's probably going to be 60 minutes to 90 minutes. All right. I haven't quite decided exactly how long yet, but, you know, 60 to 90 minutes. Um, and we're going to talk about um, various types of vehicles to invest your money. OK, we're going to talk about Roth IRAs. We're going to talk about 401ks. We're going to talk about um, health savings accounts. We're going to talk about. Um, taxable brokerage accounts. We're going to talk about various vehicles that we touched on in the first session, okay? And we're going to talk about what you can do to put your money into these various vehicles. So taking that 10% of your gross that we talked about, putting it into these various vehicles to start building yourself a stockpile of capital and, uh, and, and, and cash to be able to use uh, for your future and for your family's future and for your next generation's future okay and so we're just gonna we're gonna go through some of those things um, and then in the third installment we'll probably end up talking about some you know specific investments and stuff like that that you can kind of consider um, all of this is educational by the way not financial advice um, you know stuff that you can kind of hang your hat on a hundred percent so you know if you wanted some more thorough financial advice tax advice um, things to really kind of set you up personally, um, you know, you need to engage someone, whether that's our, our firm or if it's another firm to give you, to help you create a financial plan and to give you some true investment advice, okay? Some sp specific investment advice, all right? Because what we're talking about here are generalities. We're not talking about specifics. And so if you really want to get into your personal stuff and really know what to do for yourself personally, then you, you would have to engage us directly um, to get you that that true advice, right? But this at least gives you some good basic general information to start to really truly think about things that you should be considering and doing so that when you do talk to someone about this stuff, you at least have some basic knowledge to be able to understand what it is they're talking about, okay? So thanks for tuning in today. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enjoy the channel there's a lot of great videos that i've done in the past so by all means go back and check out some of those old videos um you know we are you know posting these videos on various social media uh mediums uh youtube uh twitter or x whatever you want to call it nowadays um uh, facebook um uh what is it linkedin and instagram so we post this, these videos on various sources out there so by all means, take a look at uh, the video on whatever medium you want to look at it on. And we just hope that you can take some of the, the thoughts that we had here today and implement some of those in your future journey towards financial freedom. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and peace.